Hello and welcome to Truck World TV from Junction 18 Services here at T-Bay. And remember, this is the only UK TV show dedicated to commercial vehicles. Now, on this week's programme, we've got Tim's test of the new Renault T-Cab. And we've also got a report on the recent CM Live event from Millbrook. But to start us off this week, we're paying homage to the trailer. And now we view the unsung hero of the commercial vehicle industry. That's right, because when you come to services like this, you'll often hear truckers being asked what cab do you have? What engine's in it? What horsepower have you got? And we think that's a bit odd. Because when you consider two thirds of the goods used in this country are delivered by a commercial vehicle, well, they don't stick them in the cab, they stick them in the trailer or in the cargo space at the back. Yeah, so address the balance, we thought we'd go to Cartwright Trailers in Altrincham, Cheshire, where we're going to have a look at all the effort that's put in to actually making a trailer from the ground up. For more than 60 years, Cartwrights have been building trailers. And here at the 38-acre Altrincham head office, the 550-strong team also deal with administration, sales, leasing and servicing, and of course, all of the engineering and design works that go into the manufacturing process. Well, this is where it all begins. Well, I suppose it doesn't really begin here. It begins with the customer saying, yes, I want that trailer. But because the order is nearly always bespoke, it's the job of this team to turn that specification into something they can actually build. Our first point is we do a contract review. As part of what we're trying to do is create the trailer around their product so that we're, we're designing around their product and their operation as a whole. Uh, we'll do sales drawings for the customers so the customers are involved right from the start to the finished product and they can review and change things as necessary. We use 3D software to help design and we also use things for section modulus and stress calculations which is done on the 3D package. Well from the relative tranquility of the design area to here, the nitty gritty part, the shop floor where the build really starts. Raw materials, we take huge sheets of steel, galvanised and stainless. This is a cut-off 6mm to give you an idea of the weight. And they don't just stick a set of wheels on these sheets, a bit more involved than that. The machine behind me, that's actually half a million pounds worth of laser cutter. Traditionally, the steel was formed using plasma punches, which still work great, but this machine is a lot more versatile and more importantly, it cuts to 0.1 of a millimetre tolerance. And also, your wastage, traditionally about 20%, this takes that down to 10. So it's super efficient, but more importantly, it makes sure that all the way down the shop floor, the plans, all the parts are gonna to fit together with super precision. And to ensure that everyone is working from the same plans, a master set travels with the trailer down the production line, from birth to rollout. And that's whether they're building a three and a half ton home delivery vehicle or a 44 ton double decker. Once the laser cutter has done its job on the main components, they then move to a traditional plasma punch, where additional mounting and fitting holes are cut, before the computer-controlled multi-access 250-ton forming press can get to work. All very high-tech, but it wasn't always this way, as Joint Managing Director John Cartwright explains. The business was uh, started by my grandfather and my father uh, back in the early 50s, in an open-ended barn, uh, you know, we know with a, like a dirt floor and uh, no doors on it. Right. Uh, not, not on this location, about five miles Can't away. Can't do that now, Europe won't let you, will it? No, <laughs> exactly, yeah, you've got, you got, you know, heating regulations, yeah. so, yeah, but, uh, so yeah, it's moved on. We've now got, what, nearly 600 people here. Um, you yeah, know, we're building, yeah, some weeks we'll build 100 products in a week, yeah. so yeah, it's moved on. Yeah, you must have yeah. seen, and I guess the, the whole family must have seen a lot of, of, of changes in the industry from when it started. That's right, yeah. The industry's um, condensed quite a bit. There's less manufacturers in it now, and it's a bit more service orientated rather than just manufacturing. People are looking at, you know, the whole uh, life of the product and how you look after the product and, you know, all those uh, additional things. Yeah. So you, you don't just make them, but you, you can rent them, you do the finance, you do the whole sort of a overused phrase, but a one-stop shop for, for trailers. Exactly, yeah, that's what we try and 
uh, provide to the customers. And you must get uh, some challenges because we believe obviously every trailer is bespoke to your customer. Do they sometimes come and want weird and wacky things that the, you have to make? Yes, you're quite right. We do. Uh, yeah, mo most of the time you've probably done something similar before, but sometimes you have to we have to sit back with the the team. We've got some fantastic people there. And you have to think, oh gee, how are we going to do this? Like, <laughs> so you've got to scratch your heads and, and come up with an idea. And invariably, you know, unless it's impossible, uh, that, that's what we do. With all of the chassis components formed into shape, they are double checked against the plans. And then it's time to fire up the welders. Well, this is where it all starts coming together now. Remember earlier, we said the orders are virtually all bespoke. If you come back here next week, and you'll find it's a completely different set of components. But I don't know about you, it doesn't work a trailer to me. It's only when we get to the next stage that you say, hey, I think I know what that is. And that's because it's in this part of the factory that the form chassis rails are married up with the cross members that will provide the strength and rigidity that the trailers need to perform properly. It's also here that the precision mounting brackets and the reinforcing plates are added to the rails to give an overall structure that is incredibly strong, yet for something that can be built to carry 44 tonnes, very precise. With between 70 and 140 trailers being produced a week here at Cartwrights, the engineers work in teams to ensure a smooth constant flow of products through the factory. Now I'm being a bit cautious here, getting quite close, but this is pretty much the last welding stage where the main chassis members are connected to the swan net. And from here, the whole structure is taken to be garnet blasted, which is an ecological form of shop blasting. It's then painted, and then the juicy bits are bolted on. I'm going to go before I catch fire. In the paint shop, several layers of primer and top coat are applied before the whole assembly is baked to give a highly durable yet smooth finish. Once the chassis is cured, the assembly is then ready for the mind-boggling amount of electrical and hydraulic cables to be installed. I'm sure you'll agree it's starting to look a little bit more like a trailer now. And this is a section where they bring other components that are brought in from other manufacturers and bolt them onto the chassis, such as the landing legs, suspension systems and axles as well. It's a little bit like a giant Meccano set, which is probably why I enjoy it so much. It's no surprise that a simple jack won't suffice to lift the massive structure off the ground, so a beam crane is used to raise the trailer completely to allow the engineers to fit the wheels in place. In this case, six of them for a three-axle trailer. It's then conventional manpower that manoeuvres the trailer to the hydraulic and electrical inspection station where all of the systems are checked for safe operation. At this stage the trailer is roadworthy, but for most orders there's still a heck of a lot more work to do. As the reinforced bulkheads and floors have to be produced to size and then installed with thousands of bolts, screws and rivets. Now this trailer has not one but two reinforced floors, split load so you can mix and match your cargo but as you saw at the start of the shot, it's going to let the rain in at the minute because there's no roof on it. But not for long because that's what these guys are working on over here. Aluminium frame, all again machine fitted together and then a huge sheet, single sheet of aluminium rolled over the top. And then it's all finished, riveted, sealed, make it completely watertight and then after that, well, we're pretty much ready to go. I think the next step is, finally, a completely finished trailer. Well, it's almost there because there is one last stage. And it's one of the trickiest, and that's applying the company's logos to the finished trailer. Because the branding is usually so big, any errors will stand out a mile. So just as at the start of production, precision is the name of the game. With a final inspection carried out, the trailers are moved to the showroom for customer approval and then it's out on the road to deliver all manner of goods that our planet relies on.
I'm genuinely amazed at how much work and craftsmanship go into putting one of these things together. And definitely, next time I'm on the motorway passing a trailer, I'm not just going to see it as a faceless box with maybe my telly or fridge or vegetables in it, but as a real genuine piece of engineering.